hello everybody welcome back to the bison workshop i'm bob and in this video i would like to share how to uh, modify and prepare your barrel band to the challenger now here is the goal before we even get started, I want to show you what we're aiming for. We want this thing to go on there just like that. I got it backwards. <laughs> Alright, so now tell me why we can go on the other way. Anyway, that's usually where I put it, right behind the words. That way you don't have to move it to read what it says. If you ever need that information, it's nice to not cover half of it up. So I just kind of go in behind it so I can read the whole thing and maybe evenly space it like it is over here so it's kind of even. So to get this barrel band, like that you start off with one of my blanks now I thread them and put set screws in them and I just got finished doing this one and we're going to show you how I prepare these for the gun now let me tell you why this is the way it is and why it has to be that way when a 3D printer prints these, it's usually heavier right here on the bottom where it lays on the bed. So it's kind of got a, a flow to it. The top is okay. I can fit this thing on in one direction on the tank, but not in that direction. See what I mean? So you can get it on about quarter of the way but what's happening is the hole is like that because of the way it prints. So what you want to do is you want to slide it on your tank first, all right, and find out which way it'll go on there, however much, as long as it starts. That's the side that will be facing you when you grab your 3 8 rasp or a half inch, whatever rasp you have. It can even be one of these. Make sure it has a bison file handle on it because otherwise it ain't going to work. So you have to buy that before you can install your barrel band. So now we know this over here is the small side and you can feel the lip on it. So I just take the roughing rasp and then I, first of all, almost forgot, you got to back these screws off. Because when I put them in to prepare to send to you guys, then I put them in and put my finger over top of that hole and push real hard so that my finger kind of pushes in the hole. And then when I feel that hit, and then I back it off a half a turn. So you're, you might fall into your set screw. So... And even if you do, it ain't going to be a big deal. It just make it the shape of the hole. So you want to back them out just enough to where they're not going to hit when you hit the file. So now we'll uh, start filing. And mainly I concentrate more on the side that's smaller so that it feathers into this side because you don't really want to file the the one side that does fit on the tank because you want this to be a nice pretty fit you don't want no flopping around so we'll just concentrate on that side and you can feel the file when it starts getting smoother and then if you have a light like I've got here I've got a light reflecting that so I can see the shiny parts in it as well 
And when I do that, it's going to raise a lip on the outside of this other side because you're pushing plastic out. So we'll just start by getting it feathered. until you start seeing it hitting this side. And you gotta use your judgment a little bit. You know, sandpaper will work too. Just depends on what you have at your disposal. We're trying to get rid of that lip first. And then, take your piece of sandpaper, and as you can see, it raises that plastic. So, we're just going to take our sandpaper, and you can see where I've already done it with the small side. And then I just kind of just go around it. Make sure that you're on your wife's best carpet to do this on her. Because, I mean... Bison scraps deserve better. <laughs> this is an indoor job. And then we'll do the other side too, just to kind of chamfer it a little bit. And then we'll try it again. Now you'll have to do that again. So see, it still won't fit. Now let's see if it'll fit the other way. So now the middle is high. So now we can go straight across. So now we're going to concentrate on all of it, not just that one side. And I don't know if you can see the light in there where you can see the shiny part or not, but we'll try to get you an angle there that you can pause. And you can see there's a shiny part right here, which is not being touched by the sandpaper so that means it's a low spot so we're just going to go around and try to get as much of that high spot to meet the low spot but you don't want to get crazy with it because we, like we said we don't want it to be loose we don't want it to be flop this is not floppy bison time and then i just work it around all the way around it and I'm not trying to take a lot out. I'm just trying to get it to fit. And then we'll take our sandpaper and do it again. Now we're only fitting one right now. You don't want to try to fit both at the same time. And then you take your finger and just smooth it out and get all that dust out of there because just the light, slightest little bit of dust will cause you problems. So now we can slide it on there. There's no wobble. All right, now we're gonna individually do this one. And I always leave the uh, thread protector cap on it because if it'll fit over that, we know it'll fit over the barrel because the cap is just a hair bigger. I mean, just just a hair, not even a hair. It's a half a hair. So see, I can go on, but it stops right about three quarters of the way. So that means that high side's there because of the 3D printer. So we're gonna do the same thing to that. Same exact thing we did to the other, the tank hole, is what we're gonna do to the barrel hole. A lot of holes in this conversation, ain't there? Now, I'm just concentrating on that high side. I'm not trying to take anything off of this side that did fit. And if I had to do this for every one of them, I believe, believe me, you guys would be paying more than that for their barrel band. So I'm trying to keep the cost down by letting you guys do this and it also helps you to learn what you have to do to make your rifle work so there's nothing wrong with learning a new trade so now we'll test that one 
and then turn it around same thing now it's the middle so now we'll just take our file and do the middle straight across and you can feel the file when it's flat Of course, I've been doing this enough that I should know. Now, there's a lot of things you can do to these barrel bands. Because I recessed these letters, you can, you can sand the top of this and make it nice and pretty and just keep doing a finer sandpaper. This plastic actually polishes up pretty nice. Um, you can do the outside of it. Uh, you can paint them whatever color you want for a, a, let's say you had a theme, a blue theme on your on your gun or a, a green a camouflage theme. You could put a paint the inside of those letters green and on the front I've got big nine. So we know that these go to the big guns with the uh, lever, not the bolt. Uh, this one's the old Challenger. This one's the big nine. So then you could sand the outside of that after that paint dries and polish it. Just do, right now I'm using 180. Or no, this is 100. Yeah, 100 grit. No, it's 180. Yeah, 180. And that's what I sand them with. And if I was to keep moving down in finer, finer, and finer, sand them on each one, go down to 220, then 320, and then keep going, shit, you can make that thing look really pretty. Uh, you can round off the edges of it. Uh, these are a work in progress, and I do this so that you get a chance to feel good about what you did on yours, because you can do these in any different way you want. So now let's try it again. Now it goes on there. But I would like for it to fit just a little bit looser. So I'm just going to barely file. I'm just barely putting pressure on it. Because we don't need to take much out of it. Make sure all your dust is out because that little bit of dust can cause you problems. Alright, so now we got it. Now we can put it on. Make sure Big Nine is facing forward. And voila. Now, another thing that you can do with these and I'm not suggesting it, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I use plastic set screws. And I do that for a reason. I don't want people complaining because the set screws, and you can't get them round nose ones, and I'm not going to take these set screws, these little teeny tiny set screws and take them out to my grinder and grind the head of them flat or round so they don't hurt your tank. I'm not doing that. You guys want to pay a hundred dollars for one of these barrel bands because that's what you'd do if I have to do that. But I don't want people complaining that it mars up their tanks. And I can understand that to a certain extent. I don't care. Uh, I want. I don't want my barrel band to move. So I use plastic set screws. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to marring up your tank. That has to be your choice. I don't want to make that choice for you. So I use plastic set screws. Now, if you wanted to put metal set screws in it, that's entirely up to you. I prefer metal. But if you do go metal, Make sure that you find the ones that has the round head, not the cup, because the cup will cut into your tank. Not deep enough to hurt anything unless you're putting a, a, 
big 10 foot freaking cheater bar on it, yeah, then you got problems. <laughs> the big difference between uh, an Allen wrench like that and a big 10 foot cheater bar. So once you get it on there, I just kind of eyeball down the barrel and the tank and it, I usually let it just fall right into place. And then I'll tighten those down so it doesn't move. And they will move. Um, the only way that you're not going to get them to, or the only way you're going to get them so that they won't move is to use metal set screws. Uh, you can tell when you're too tight with these plastic ones. Uh, because the Allen head will turn in your in the head of it I don't like that part either but that's what it is but if you did want to do metal set screws yeah I'm looking for my magnifying glass hold on guys those barrels are 1032 and 3 8 inch long so if you was to want to use metal set screws you can that's entirely up to you. I provide the neoprene ones and, uh, or Delrin or whatever the hell they are, and that gets you started. Uh, they work fine for me. Uh, I would rather have metal. I actually don't have metal in any of these, I don't think. But anyway, that's how you prepare your barrel band to fit and to fit properly. Uh, if you go too much, then you get a bunch of flop on it. Uh, you don't want flop. So, anyway, that's how you prepare your barrel band for the Challenger. Uh, and that's for any barrel band. Any barrel band I make, that's exactly the same process I go through on every single one of them. So this takes care of every gun that I make parts for. Uh, but I send them to you blank like this so you can fit them to your tank. And I'll tell you another reason why this is, has to happen that way. Think about this. Getting ready to educate you. Every gun has a different life. Uh, you can have 20 people have the same exact gun. They all have the same gun. They all treat them differently. Uh, different climate, uh, different uh, pressures. Uh, some people fill their guns every day, two or three times a day. That's a lot of stress on this metal. Metal does stretch. 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 PSI is stretching pressure. So, nine times out of ten, when metal stretches, it doesn't bounce back exactly where it was before. It's slightly bigger. And over time, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh... Not en enough that you would notice it, but if you was looking at it through a, the Hubble telescope and see atoms, <laughs> yeah, you would see that it expands. All right, some people fill their gun once every two weeks. Never hardly shoot them. They sit around and do nothing. They don't have as rough a life, so their tank's going to be different. Now, if you took all 20 of those guns, and you put a micrometer on it, or caliper, you would not get the same measurement on any one of those 20. Two of those will never be the same. No two of them out of the 20 will be the same. So that's why you have to fit it yourself because the life of your gun is different than 
the neighbor or the guy in California or the guy in Alaska. You got difference between cold weather, you got hot weather. So you have to keep all that stuff in account. So you got to think inside the box. You got to be in there right up close <laughs> and understand what is actually going on. Now, not every machinist machines the exact same part. Yeah, I'm sure these were C and C, but they're they're probably different. I guarantee you they're different. Every single one of them will never measure the same distance between the barrel and the tank. So, yeah, you have to count for all that stuff. This stuff sees more than you think before you get it. So, there's some education for you. Anyway, uh, just wanted to cover that, let you guys know how these barrel bands are prepared, how they're made, and how you prepare them for your gun. So, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later.